Welcome to my video series on zero-based budgeting and cash flow management. Today, we will go through creation of a zero-based budget. For this video, we will focus on the first two steps of the zero-based budget, financial goals and income and expense planning. So first, let's jump to the goals tab. From here, we can set the longer-term goals, the medium-term goals, and this year's goals. We'll start with the longer-term goals. So for the longer term goals, you'll see that I uh, put in some very high level goals. You do not need specific dollar values. Similarly, for the medium term goals, I have uh, some high level goals that will direct me towards achieving my longer term goals. But also there are no specific dollar values. Whereas for this year's goals, which are short term, I have specific dollar value goals which will direct me towards achieving my medium and my long-term goals. Specifically in this case, I have goals towards starting establishment of my emergency fund, paying down uh, an existing debt, and meeting my employer match on 401k to start adding money towards my retirement savings. Once we have these goals in place, we can proceed to the next step, which is filling in the income. This sheet is where we will put in the salary sources on the first column, followed by the amounts received um, for each month of the year on the subsequent columns. So you can use up to uh, 12 different sources of salary. In this case, in this example, we'll use four of them. So in this case, we have an uh, example that we have, we receive a check two times a month. So we have check one, and then we have our primary uh, salary uh, check two. Then we have a tax refund that comes in uh, every year uh, based on history. And we have rental income. So the salary, what I want to enter here is the amount of money that gets deposited into my checking account by my employer. So this, uh, before the employer gives me uh, my check, they take out taxes and they take out other pre-tax uh, uh, things like for insurance or etc. So I don't want to include those here. Our zero-based budget is going to be on budgeting and the money that we can control and that's the money that gets put into your account. So in this case, let's say that uh, for this example that we have $3,000 uh, every paycheck that comes in for both months. So I'm going to drag that across. I'll go ahead and drag that down. Okay. And then tax refund in April, we expect $750 based on history and rental income. We have $800 that we receive every month. So once we've entered that in, you'll see that we now have $82,350 worth of income. This represents the entire amount of spendable or controllable income that we receive into uh, our account uh, for the entire year. So once we have this, we can also then go and say when we receive these sources of income. Our check one we receive on the first week of the month. Our, our second check we receive on the third week of the month. And the other two are unscheduled, meaning they can come in at any time. We really don't have control over when they hit. Actually, rental income, let's assume that we get that, that also in on week one. Okay, now that we have uh, filled in our income, we can now move to step three, which is entering our expense plan. So on this screen, we will go ahead and enter in all of our expenses until the remaining income drops to zero. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the goals. So I'll put in the first goal, which is our emergency fund. We want to build that up. Uh, we don't need to have a group name, but I like to use group names where I can. It helps in the future for reporting and comparison. Uh, now, once we put in our name and group, we have to pick a type. There are three types, the monthly fixed, monthly variable, and annual. And those are described here on the right. Um, the monthly fixed are expenses that occur every single month 
and cannot be changed unless they're canceled. Think about, for example, your rent or a mortgage payment. That's a fixed payment that happens every month and you can't change it. A monthly variable is something that occurs every month, but you can choose how much you spend. Think, for example, groceries or eating out. Those are things that you can do or spend every month, but you can choose how much to spend. You can flex it. Uh, it's up to your discretion. Then there are annual expenses. These are expenses that do not occur every month. They occur periodically throughout the year, and sometimes you don't know when they're going to happen. For example, medical expenses would be an expense that you're going to have to do during the year, but you're not sure when. Uh, others might be clothing. You don't buy clothing every month, but you do know that you need to budget some uh, for clothing that will be used periodically throughout the year. So in this case, our emergency fund, we're going to put this as a monthly variable expense because we're going to be tr contributing it to it every month, but it's not fixed. I can choose how much I put in every month. And I'm going to uh, assume here $140 a month towards that. Now you'll see that when I do that, the the income, um, a remaining income goes down and the amount of my monthly variable goes up, including the annual amount. Since I'm spending $140 a month towards my emergency fund, that's going to equate to $1,680 over the course of the year. Now, if you remember in the goal section, I had put a goal of $1,500 towards uh, my annual fund, uh, my uh, emergency fund buildup over the year. It's okay to, the goal is the goal, this is the plan. So let's do another goal here. So we said, well, first of all, I have my, my loan payment for an existing debt. Um, oh, by the way, before I move on, uh, my emergency fund, what I should do here, because it's a goal, even though the, the goals, the group name is just a name that I put for grouping. But to flag this as a goal so the system can see it and help you track your goal, you, there's a drop-down list. You can say, yeah, the emergency fund is a savings goal. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and then go to my loan payment. My loan payment is uh, also call that a goal. And I will call this my loan payment as a monthly fixed. This is a fixed uh, payment that I have to make every month towards paying down a debt. Uh, say it's $200, and I will go ahead and flag this one as a debt reduction goal. Okay, now when I come over here to, I'm going to do an extra loan payment, and this is part of my goals was I don't want to just pay down my the mandatory amount towards my loan. I want to make extra loan payments, and so I want to put that towards a goal. In this case, I'm going to put this one as a monthly variable. Unlike the one above, this one I can choose how much extra I'm going to uh, pay towards extra pay down. And I'm going to put $100 a month. And I'm going to again flag this one as a debt reduction goal. Okay, so we have um, another goal, which is a savings. So let's pretend that I'm saving for some furniture that I'd like to buy. And so I'm going to put this as a savings goal. I'll put this one as a annual goal because I, I um, by putting it as an annual goal, it'll automatically be pulled out the amount that I need for the year. So I'm going to put an amount of $1,000 that I want to save this year towards furniture. And in a future video, when we talk about the annual expense management, you'll see how that gets automatically pulled aside for savings. So in this case, I'm going to call this one a savings goal. And we have uh, one more that I just want to show you. This is an optional thing. You don't need to track this, but if you want to track things like 401k um, to show how much money you're pulling aside there, you can do that. And that one would be a monthly fixed because that's the amount that you tell your employer you want to pull out every month and it gets pulled directly out of your paycheck. Now, one thing you'll notice is uh, I'm going to flag this one as a pre-tax goal. Now, you'll see here that when I put in the value, it will not reduce my remaining income because this is money that's pulled out before I ever get my paycheck. And the amount of money that I'm using here as the spendable or controllable income is the amount that I'm getting after pre-tax deductions. 
So this is more just for tracking. This again, this is optional. They're not really part of the zero base budget, but it can be used in later when we talk about goal tracking. You can use that to kind of track how your uh, your goal your savings goals are um, are going throughout the year. Okay, so that was all of the the goals. Now I'll go ahead and just put in some other um, other expenses and then we'll talk through those. Okay, I have gone and pasted in the uh, additional expenses so we can see my remaining income has now dropped to 2,594 remaining. Now I wanted to show you a couple of more things. One is my car payment. In this example, I have a $400 a month car payment, but I really am going to about to pay off that car. I have 10 more months January through October of car payment, then that car is completely paid off. So what I can do here, because this is a monthly fix and I'm paying $400 a month, I can go ahead and ex click anywhere on the green to expand this area. And it'll show you that I have $400 a month. And I'll go ahead and just type in the 400 here so you can see. It's gonna allocate $400 every month through the year. But now what I can do is I can just delete or set to zero November and December. Right. And what that will do is that will reduce the amount. If I close this, you'll see that my um, remaining income has increased because it knows now that I do not have a car payment for every month of the year, only for the 10 months that it shows here. Um, so that's one. So anything that shows a number on the monthly spend is essentially means that that month that value is the same across all the months even if it doesn't show it on on the screen here and you you can see a sample here if i put in 2000 here it'll actually show you the amount but in either case it's the same a value here means that value is the same across every month of the year if it's different it'll show the the word various and then you can click anywhere in the screen area to hide the, um, the details. Okay, so I have $3,394 remaining. Another thing that I wanted to show you is this optional flag. So by default, all of my goals show up as optional, but I can go down and I can say, okay, I have some things called optional services like my Netflix or my Spotify. I can go ahead and just flag those as optional expenses. And that's, uh, you'll see what this does a little bit more in a future video when you we go over the monthly manage, managing monthly expenses. Um, it, it's also, this optional is also used in helping to calculate how much uh, emergency fund is recommended, your minimum and how much would be recommended between low and high. Okay, and that depends upon what items you consider optional or things that you could stop if you had to. Um, okay, the last thing, uh, another couple of things I wanted to show you is on the bottom, things like um, like electricity. In the area where I live, the electricity is not necessarily a fixed, you know, $125 a month throughout the year. Usually over here, it gets very hot during the summer and electricity goes up and then it goes down. So in this case, if you want to budget accordingly, you could do something like, okay, uh, I'm spending, you know, $50 on electricity uh, for January and February. There's not very much, you know, it's pretty, pretty cheap. Uh, and maybe also in November, December. So I can do that here. Uh, put that across. But then when I get down to uh, March, it starts to increase, you know, 75 then suddenly it goes up to uh, 100, and then it might go to, um, by the time it were May, we're talking about 150, and then maybe um, uh, 175, then July, August, September, it might be $200 a month. Uh, September, and then it starts to go back down pretty quickly. Right, so in this case, I'll go something like uh, 120 and say 75 here. Okay, so that just to sh goes to show how on, uh, in, in most cases, if you have things like um, groceries, you can say, yeah, I'm gonna spend $1,000 a month 
you know, it's, it's the same throughout the whole, you know, every month and I can then adjust uh, on a monthly basis because it's a variable. So I can control how much I spend based on other things. But my electricity, I know for a fact that based on history, that it will increase and it will decrease. Now I can control this based upon my air conditioning usage or other uh, usage of electricity. I, I can I can try to manage to not overspend on on this. However, I know that during the summer months it will go up, and I need to budget that extra money. And so that's how you can do it here. Okay. The last thing I was going to show you is now I have three thousand four hundred forty-four dollars left remaining. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, travel, right? And I'll call this discretionary. I'll group it with my discretionary. And I'll call this an annual because it's something I'm going to be saving up for, maybe spending during the year. Now, when I put in, if I put in $3,400, you'll see that this goes to $44 left. If I change it to $3,444, then remaining income goes to zero and I'm done. So when there's nothing displaying here on the top to the right of the of the um, allocations, that means that all of my income has been allocated. And you can confirm that by looking on the validate tab, which will show you, okay, here is your total income from all sources. Here's your total expenses that you've just allocated on your expenses tab. And, and it goes to zero means that you have a valid zero-based budget plan. All of your money is planned for and allocated. Now, if I go over to here and say, well, I really had uh, $3,500 towards my, uh, my vacation, uh, my travel, you'll see that it's going to show me up here a red showing that, well, you are now uh, planning to spend $56 more than you have planned income. So, and you can also confirm that on the validate tab, it'll show you that yes, your total expenses exceeds your income by $56 and you're overspend. So of course, there's a couple of things you can do about that. One would be, this is where prioritization comes in. Uh, you can then say, I'm going to go ahead and maybe I need that $3,500 for travel. I need to go and then reduce somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to spend less money somewhere else, right? Maybe on my furniture, I say, okay, well, no, I'm going to spend, you know, instead of that thousand dollars, I'm going to spend $944, right? Towards furniture. And now I can do my travel, right? Um, another option of course is to say, okay, I'm going to go and get a side gig because I know I'm going to be $100 short or whatever short, and I'm go, going to go ahead and add another income stream and try to pull in that income because I know that in order to meet my my goals, I'll need that extra income. Now, if if you can't pull in that income stream, again, you can you can reduce spending somewhere else. But those are the kind of priority decisions that you need to be to make in order to have your zero-based budget. And the zero-based budget. Um, ensures that all of your money is going towards the goals and the priorities that you have set. Um, if you don't do a zero-based budget, a lot of times you can spend money and then later on in the year you realize that you don't have the money that you need to achieve a goal that you had set. And that's why having your goals is the first step in your zero-based budget, followed by your income, and your expenses, and then validating the plan. And you can see that all these areas in blue here, that concludes our discussion on creating a zero-based budget. Uh, you can go ahead and follow along to my later videos that talk about expense tracking, and then on managing your monthly spending, managing your annual spending, and then cash flow forecasting.